we're back after what maybe a couple weeks has it been since our main introduction that we did yeah at least uh at least three weeks now mm, three weeks yeah something like that so basically we still have some stuff we didn't put in the ground such as the fennel but we're gonna get that in today and some beans and whatnot going into the tent here the tempo uh, kind of a storage temple, but at the same time I've kind of repurposed it uh, to continue growing uh, different peppers and whatnot in five gallon buckets, three gallon buckets, etc. Here we got the ones that I was keeping aside before. These are the death spirals. And as you can see, they're really, they really kind of recovered. This was the plant that I thought was having all sorts of problems and everything, but it turns out that it was probably just sunburnt a little bit. Over here we have a sweet red bell sweet peppers. Um, these are ones that I'm going to be overwintering that are in the buckets, so uh, they're going to be brought inside. This is the ahi cherapita that I've got going in a big bucket, my biggest bucket. And as you can see inside here, we're already getting all sorts of little fruit and flowers growing. And these remain really, really small. Over here we have a seven pot brain strain. And I've kind of moved uh, with Nate uh, the peppers around a little bit so we can give them a little bit more space to uh, work out a little better. So we've got some fruits developing on this already and some more flowers on the way and such. They've really ballooned since the last time we've done a video. Bolivian rainbow, I've got one outside and I've got one that I recently planted in a pot uh, to keep inside just to see the difference between how fast this will grow inside the tempo versus the one we have outside the tempo. This is the Choco Butt CS. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of development happening on that as well. Nice big canopies on them. This is the Carolina Reaper back here. And its stem really took off. I mean, that's got to be like almost an inch thick stem, Nate. That's pretty intense. This is the BBG7 SRTSL Orange. Nice canopy developing on that. We've got the yellow scorpions here, and they're starting to kind of change color a little bit too. We've got uh, Roger's giant orange habs, and I got a really big one starting to develop right there, Nate. Look at that one. Wow. And then this is the ghostly jalapeno, which I also retied after we moved it. And apparently, this is what they're supposed to really look like. A friend of mine that gave me the seeds flipped out and said that uh, he didn't have one that even came remotely close to looking like this. <laughs> so apparently we're doing something really right. I think it's the fact that we're keeping it in the tempo. Yeah. Coming outside... We've got the concrete pad. This used to actually be a greenhouse at one point, and I built a nice frame for the greenhouse to hold it down in strong winds and everything. The frame worked. The frame is still here, but the greenhouse unfortunately got destroyed. Uh, not even one season it lasted, Nick. Hmm. We got the peach boots here, but I really think they don't like the full sun like this, so. I'm considering moving that underneath the murder tree in the back. These are the uh, Zapotec jalapenos. And I've got lots of fruit developing on this one, as you can see. Uh, we've got different cucumbers down below here. We've got various different uh, peppers here. These are all the peppers that I put in the buckets the last time. I'm not going to go over every one right now, but uh, definitely the canopies on them have definitely expanded quite a bit. 
that is the Bolivian rainbow and as you can see it is quite developed compared to the one that we've got inside the temple at the moment but the one in the temple to be fair I recently planted inside that pot uh, we've got our bird's eye peppers here uh, we got serrano peppers there We've got uh, three different types of eggplant here in uh, 10 gallon pots. Well, here we've got, got the beetroots, we've got um, red onion, two different types of carrots again. We've got the spring globe onions there. Here we've got the uh, Brussels sprouts, the red cabbage, we've got radishes there, spinach, a little bit of intermixed stuff and everything. The trugs with all our different romaine lettuces. We tried to transplant some. We're hoping it's going to take back. We've got, uh, again, some Spanish onions in the middle. We've got carrots there, different mescaline lettuces and stuff. Here we've got uh, the chai patch, which is really coming along. And uh, different basils. We've got celery going that we regrew from uh, roots. I'm not sure what this is, but oh, that's thyme. That's what that is. We got thyme there. We got thyme here. It's coming along pretty nice. This is some lamb's quarter. I'm just going to pull that out because it shouldn't be there. And look, this is what I'm talking about, Nate. Murder tree. Mm -hmm. Murder tree, just that little bit right there. That is exactly what the Manitoba maple does. It sprouts these all over the place. And if you don't address it fast enough, then basically it grows out of control. We're going to be cutting the grass, obviously, today. So we're under the canopy of the nice hanging spruce that I've got here. And this is the Logan berries that we tied up in kind of like a repurposed pole and whatnot to uh, make like a gazebo type thing out of it and the berries are just starting to change color but it, once we did this it just burst out with the berries and it's gonna be a nice uh, crop coming off of it this year for sure and as you can see a lot of things have changed recently uh, we've got the black plastic down to keep the weeds out. We set up some rows originally, but we decided to forego the row situation and try to make kind of a giant hydro bed in the back. But before we get to that section, here we've got the blueberries. And in all their development going on, we've started getting some blue blueberries going on there, Nate. These are going to be ready to pick soon. These ones are starting to root and take place in the garden. Still got to put those in the ground. But take a look at this. Look at the beauty of that. This is the second year I've had this plant. We got them last year. And they're already starting to develop blueberries on them. I'm really happy about that. We got the currant bush here, which is just about ready to be picked lots of juicy currants on that make some red currant jelly it's got the black currant bush here they're ready to be picked as well and this one is kind of starting to pick up a little bit again but we still got to get that murder tree out of in between it mm -hmm. this here that that is a murder tree that Oh, I hate Manitoba maple. Here we've got all the peppers planted. The ones that I figure are probably more full sun than shade are planted up here. We started with the California Wonders, some sweet Cubanelles. We've got uh, Bolivian rainbows. We've got cayenne peppers there. Some super cayennes in there too, I'm sure. We've got the cherry bombs here. We've got bird's eyes for the last few bushes there. Oh look, we've already got some nice red bird's eyes over there too. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, sweet Cubanelles are here, actually. Uh, fish peppers. Some are doing better than others, but we only recently got this in because um, we had a big heat wave and not good to plant in the heat wave and stuff. Uh, over here we have Ahi Asta de Bui Rojo. We've got the Ahi Ayuyos. Uh, we've got Ahi Chuchachas. We've got Ghostly Jalapenos. They look a little sad, some of them, but... Like I said, we kind of got a slow start to getting them in the ground. <coughs> Various different tomato plants. Back here, we set this up so that uh, we can partially shade these not full sun peppers. So these are all the peppers that basically don't want full sun on them all the time. Uh, we've got giant red habs here, we've got seven pot katies, we've got seven pot brain strains, uh, giant orange habs, we've got fatali peppers, we've got choco but cs, we've got butchalokia chocolates, and I haven't finished uh, putting the poles or writing the names on these, but they're all on the cups and stuff. They're yellow scorpions and Carolina reapers and such. Over here we've got all different tomatoes. Those are Tiny Tim's, so they're cherry tomatoes. And then we've got um, Purple Cherokees coming up to here. And then these are all Roma VF. That one has tomatoes. Hey, it does. Look at that. We're getting quite a few of them. These really took off. We're going to have to um, move up the straps and move in the plants into the cages. Here we've got uh, two beef steaks. This one, I don't know. It seems to, it needs be, water. Ha seems to be having a problem. But And these are all of Keith Chadwick's uh, Ottawa pepper um, San Marzano peppers. Those are tomatoes. Uh, sorry, not uh, San Marzano peppers, <laughs> tomatoes, I mean. There's more tomatoes on the vine here. Yeah, those are like bigger Romas, if I recall. San Marzanos are bigger than Romas. Or it's the other way around. And then we've got two tiny Tims there again. Cherry tomatoes. So, we managed to get everything in the ground here. And in the meantime, Nate has been cleaning up the garden over here. We got peas and beans over there too. Have yeah, any well, of the beans come up? We're about to go over there. So Nate's been doing a hell of a job cleaning all this out. We've got remnants of fireworks too. We're gonna have to get out here. This is the half that hasn't been done yet. And this is the half here that Nate has done. Yeah, I gotta get on that pretty soon because it's starting to grow. My god, you went to town on this. Well, there was a lot of debris in it. We're walking on the debris. So over here... The beans are starting to come up. Yep, yeah, I've got green ones that we need to plant here. Green pole beans. These are all yellow pole beans. And yeah, and there's more coming up there too. So pretty soon these are going to start climbing the different poles that we put in place. Obviously I didn't put this pole back. <laughs> it blew in the wind a little bit. So I'm just going to move it back. Yeah, you accidentally made a wind walker. Yeah, it was kind of weird. It was flopping around but not falling, falling down or anything. Uh, here we've got the garlic that we recently cleared a whole bunch of scapes off of. It's going to be ready to be picked soon. I see some more scapes we're going to have to get. And we're going to do a video about making a ferment with the scapes. Pickled scapes. I should run the cultivate cycle through here. Yeah, here we expanded this a little bit since the last time we planted the peas. Uh, up 
here for the ending of the hose. We planted some red onions, and there's one coming up there so far. Oh, yeah. So we planted red onions there. These, uh, if I recall, these are the nasties. They seem to be having a lot of trouble. But we planted another set of seeds. These are the uh, snow peas. They really came up fast. And then these are the sugar pod peas. And yeah, we've got some coming up on both sides. And then I planted down here again more red pepper, uh, red uh, onions. They're starting to come up too. We've got quite a bit done. Oh, and the horseradish is spreading. The horseradish is also coming up and spreading. It's spread over into my old compost pile. It's spread in between the pile and everything. It's. I must mean there's a lot of horseradish fruit down there. Oh, we're going to get that horseradish root too before the uh, fall uh, and winter sets into place so that we can store it and freeze it and nice. use it fresh to make fresh horseradish. For seafood sauce or hot sauces or whatnot. Quite a bit of uh, work has taken place. Now we're going to go and cut the yard and tidy it up a little bit. And we did a couple of bonfires in the meantime too. The asparagus. I'm letting frond now. We pretty well used up the season. I mean, we still get asparagus off of it every day. There's a piece right there. Yeah, that one I'm letting frond, but we've still got a nice fresh asparagus here that I love eating out of the ground. So tasty that way. But the idea worked pretty good. Putting all that peat moss down and uh, putting the sand on top of it helped reflect a little bit of the heat. Helped uh, turn it into a bit of a sponge to soak the water down. And yeah, I'm still getting asparagus growing, which is more and more difficult at this point of time now. But uh, like I said, I'm letting it frond mm -hmm. so that it can soak up its energy and spread its seed and whatnot for next year. and. Hopefully we get even more success off of this next year and little weeds. Jeez, just look at them all. Mm -hmm. I pick this like every day, Nate, and I'm still getting on average probably a pound a day off of it at the moment. Gooseberries going on here. Of course, I love nature and I took the flowers off of them, but uh, I left the uh, milkweed for the... Uh, Butterflies, the monarch butterflies, they really like to eat that, the caterpillars. Uh, a little bit of cleanup here, but the gooseberries are doing pretty good. Gonna have to harvest those soon. Yeah, there's a lot of them on the ground. Yeah, I know. Probably too much heat, I don't know. The gooseberry in the front, underneath the bush, seems to do better than the ones that are out in the full sun. Like this is one that's ready? Yeah, you can try it. You might not like it. It's fine. It's fine. It'd be very good in jam. You wouldn't even need oh, to add much sugar. That's that's what you do with gooseberries generally. A lot of people don't eat them raw, you know. Mm -hmm. The currants are gonna be tart. A little bit. Yeah. The cage you built around this, Nate, mm -hmm. was intense. <laughs> very well done. I didn't want the birds to get in, or I didn't want to use Velcro. And it's all, you can pull it out pretty easily. And I think I made a mistake in tying up the branches in the middle. They didn't seem to like it too much. Mm. So, for next year I'm going to remember that. Don't tie it up. Let it do its thing. We'll just make the cage bigger around it. Yeah. And... Well, that's about it. That's the progress that we've made since the last time. Um, it's been a very dry summer, of course, so the rhubarb is not doing as great 
Because it could be. I have to water it. I don't remember to water it. And, well, we're whittling down to wood piles and... Yeah, this needs some water. Oh, it needs water ferocious. I'll have to water it when the sun's off of it. I don't even think I saw it seed this year. Like, I didn't see any big flowers coming off of it. But, that's the update. Nate is still living in the back, doing his camping and COVID. And we're all surviving still. It's been fun so far. For sure. Alright, I guess we're going to mow the grass now. Yep, let's get the mowing done and get on with the rest of our day.